Martha, we are live here at Metropolitan. Thank you for joining me this morning. Well, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Certainly. Um, one of the things that we like to do at Metropolitan is to make sure that we're always informing the international community of uh, things that are relevant to them. Uh, politics and the ability to shape it back home is pretty important to Americans. And unfortunately, I've learned over the years that many realize that they don't know how to do it. Many think they can't even do it to, to begin with. And so I really appreciate that you're spending some time with us here. Could you share a little bit about who you are and what your role is in trying to help Americans abroad to participate? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I, I'm currently the chair of Democrats Abroad, which is a global organization that helps uh, Americans who are living abroad to vote in, uh, in all kinds of elections. And I live in the Netherlands. I've been living here for 23 mm -hmm. years. And I've been involved in helping people vote as a voter registration volunteer and in all kinds of different roles on a help desk. And I've led Democrats abroad in the Netherlands uh, for over 20 years. And I got elected as chair this June. And we're gearing up for big elections next year and some little elections this year. And I'm um, really looking forward to talking more about voting as an American abroad. Fantastic. Uh, one thing that I'd like to point out very quickly, because we don't have a whole lot of time, is that many people think that voting really doesn't or it's not important to vote until next year. But we don't think that that's the case. We have some important elections coming up. Can you expand on that? Sure. Yeah, there's um, there's state level elections. A lot of people are very connected to the place where they vote. It's the place where they last lived. Americans always voted their last address. And so you could you know, there's there's governor elections, there's state legislative elections. There's there's a whole variety of elections that Americans often can vote in. It really depends on the state you're from, whether they'll let you vote all the way down the ballot. But I vote in California. It matters a lot to me who's the governor of California. So I, I'm really glad that I'm able to do that. So there's um, there's a whole series of states that have important elections elections this year, like Kentucky, Louisiana, Ohio, um, and a few others, uh, New Jersey. And so those are elections that many Americans abroad can vote in. And uh, well, we can talk in a moment about whether they should. Okay. And also those are going to be in the in a few weeks. It's not like it's uh, next year. It's, been, it's yeah. very soon, correct? Exactly. They're co we're coming right around the corner. The first Tuesday in November is when we vote. So first off, just for the avoidance of doubt, if you are an American citizen anywhere in the world, you still have the ability to vote. Can you uh, talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that's right. So there's a federal law that actually allows Americans who are living abroad to vote. It was brought in in the 1970s. Before that, actually, we couldn't vote. Um, by While most elections in the United States are locally organized and have, are under local jurisdiction, this is a federal law that applies to us living abroad. Um, so anybody who is a U.S. citizen who has lived in the United States can vote. That's absolutely the case. In most states, if you're a citizen of the United States, but you've never lived in the United States, most of them will let you vote. That, again, is according to local, local jurisdictions. And we have our own processes, our own forms. It's all been streamlined and made uh, standard across all the 50 states. It's a one page uh, form that you fill in to tell them where to send your ballot, right? They don't send it back to your address back in the States. They don't send it to your families. Your family can DHL it to you. They send it right to you. You can get it in your email. And, um, and that's, uh, that's how we vote. Um, and that's one of the most important things to know is you can vote. Um, it's a simple process. It's a one page form and they will send you your ballots for the entire year if you fill in that form every, every January. So you just mentioned that I was going to ask you. So it needs to be every January if you want them to vote if there are, uh, I guess, elections during the year, not just in the generals. Um, is that correct? Well, we recommend that everybody send in the, the form that it's called an FPCA, a federal postcard application, which you can get on votefromabroad.org. We recommend that you send it in every year in case there's an election. Sometimes there you know, won't be any elections in your state, but there could always be a special election. There could always be somebody who has a seat that needs to be filled. Um, so we, we really recommend that people do that every year. And if you do it in January, then you're going to get the ballots for the entire year. Now, some states will automatically send you a ballot even if you don't do that, but it's still a really good practice to send that form in because if you have any issues and you don't get your ballot, you have recourse. You have a you have that federal right again to vote. And if you can show that you sent that form in, then we can that we can help you make sure that you get your ballot. Okay. One thing that I'd like to point out also is votefromabroad.org. You're definitely with the Democrat side, but the is the votefromabroad.org uh, affiliated to either party? It is. It's our website, and we help anyone who comes there. Uh, we don't ask anyone's party. Uh, voter registration is always nonpartisan, so we help anyone who wants to request a ballot. Okay, that's good to know. 
And let's talk about the number of expats that are around the world because they can influence, uh, and in some cases, very importantly, in state elections. Can you talk to us about the number of expats that exist and how they may have uh, influenced any of the previous elections? Yeah. Well, there's an estimated 6 million Americans of voting age living abroad. That's an estimate by the State Department. We're not counted in the census, so the actual numbers are, you know, uh, are not really known. Um, but those numbers and the number of voters from abroad can absolutely influence elections. There were nearly a million voters from abroad in the 2020 election. We came out in, in big numbers, bigger than ever before. And there were a couple of states where the number of voters abroad in Arizona and Georgia were greater than Joe Biden's margin of victory. So we really had an important role to play in that election in terms of making sure that, that our, our Democratic president was elected. Um, and that can always happen. There's many elections across the United States where races are really close. Um, and that's one of the reasons we urge everybody to vote in every election, because sometimes it comes down to a vote or even sometimes in Virginia once to a coin toss. So every vote matters. Okay, excellent point. Um, one of the things in order to cast your vote, people sometimes have mentioned that there's, even though they're identify and connect with their state, they're not always as up to date with who is running in their state. How can people learn about uh, what's going on in their state so they can feel, you know, um, informed? Yeah, well, there's some great resources online. Um, so, you, you know, you can look up in Ballotopedia. Uh, there's resources like that. You can also go to your um, uh, to your state party, you know, you can look and see what the different parties who they're uh, who they're um, endorsing and recommending. And you know what I always do is I always ask my friends and family when I get down to local elections, I'm actually able to vote all the way down the ballot. So the mayor's election, um, you know, that's something there's often like eight candidates and, you know, many different parties. So I just ask my friends and family, um, you know, what they think. Um, but there's many resources and there's new resources coming um, that that will be available for that. Okay, so for people who, U.S. nationals who are living abroad, they can participate in the global presidential primary. Um, how does one do that? Uh, well, that's a really special event every four years. It's organized by Democrats abroad. So that is a primary election. So the candidates for president are on the ballot in that election. And it's held in more than 45 countries around the world. And it's a place where Americans can come. This is a unique opportunity every four years to vote in person. So Democrats abroad is a, recognized as a state within the Democratic Party. So we have our own primary and we hold that locally in, in, in hundreds of, of cities around the globe. And so um, anybody who wants to vote in that primary can register on the same day or they can register in advance um, at democratsabroad.org. Um, and they can, um, they can come and they can cast their ballot in person for, for president. Um, and all of that is announced um, well in advance by all of the wonderful countries and cities where Democrats Abroad is organized around the world. And it's a really special moment, um, you know, for people to actually, you know, uh, express themselves, to vote, um, you know, in election in the United States, but also to bring, you know, their children who've just turned 18 and are voting for the first time. Um, it's a really it's a really great experience to be able to vote in person because normally we vote by by uh, by mail. But this is a really uh, a great moment to be together with other Americans as we uh, as we vote for our presidential okay. campaign. In solidarity. Also, I think I'd be uh, remiss not to point out that there's a big event coming up uh, the weekend of the 28th. Um, can you talk a little about what's going on in Alicante? Yes, in Alicante, we're having our, our regional retreat. Uh, Democrats Abroad is organized across three different regions, Asia Pacific, the Americas, Canada, all the way down to the tip of South America, and then Europe, the Middle East and Africa. So that's our EMEA group. So we're meeting together for a retreat um, to plan uh, our 24 um, strategy and everything that we're going to do to get out the vote across across our region in 2024. So it's going to be a really nice opportunity for people to meet face to face. You know, we haven't done that so much. We did the whole election process in 2020. Uh, well, you know, after after the lockdown, had to go remote and online. So it's going to be really great to be able to meet together face to face and uh, get trained and to plan for 2024. OK. Um, and of course, we like for people to sign up and join the Democrats abroad. Uh, how, how can people do that? 
Uh, yeah, people can go right to the website and there's uh, there's a button there you can click to join uh, Democrats Abroad and and you need to provide a little bit of information like your name and, and your uh, your date of birth because we are going to be facilitating people in voting and then you will give your, um, your address where you live and the address where you last live in the United States so we can see what congressional district you're in and we can target information for you um, that may be relevant for your uh, for your voting location and, uh, and keep the information about other people's voting locations uh, uh, from coming into your email your email inbox. Okay. Also, I was following you on LinkedIn, and you have some very interesting uh, and compelling, I guess, content regarding the importance of voting. I don't know if you can share maybe a few ideas of why it's going to be important to vote in 2024. Um, I'll let you speak there. Yeah, well, I think it's always important to vote. You know, I was raised in a family where we just did that, where we just voted. Um, and it uh, wasn't really, you know, something that I had to think about very much. Um, but I think in this upcoming election, and that we certainly had that sense, you know, four years ago, is democracy is really at stake in the United States. Um, you know, we've seen the Republican Party become very extreme. Um, you know, we had an insurrection uh, around the election in, in 2020. And, um, you know, we have a return of some of the same characters, the Republican Party, who um, are not very democratically minded. So um, we have a, a president right now, Joe Biden, who has accomplished an amazing amount in his term so far and has made a lot of things happen and it improved people's lives and is a huge proponent of democracy and the rule of law. And it's really on the line. It's really important that everybody vote this time um, because that is, um, that's the world we're living in. We're living in a world where we really need to stand for democracy. Um, you know, I was in uh, St. Louis last week at a meeting of the Democratic Party and our vice president, uh, Kamala Harris, I had the opportunity to meet her, but she also spoke at one of our meetings and she said, democracy is, is too is two sided. It's only as strong as our willingness to fight for it. And it's also very fragile and it really requires that we all participate in it. And that really resonated with me. Um, you know, we're voting to make sure that we have democratic freedoms. Excellent. Very well, uh, I guess, articulated and very concisely done. Um, is there anything that particularly moves you for this coming election? Any issue that uh, is really going to drive you? Um, well, you know, I think, you know, democracy and the rule of law. Um, I think equality is on the ballot in, in many ways. Um, I mean, certainly a woman's right to choose. I mean, the right of any individual to choose um, their own health care and to make their own decisions in their life. So the question of the right to choose um, an abortion or not is on the ballot, you know, all across the states. And, and, you know, that's a winning issue because it has the majority support of the American people. But there is a party, the Republican Party, that really wants to severely restrict um, the rights of women in the United States. And so that is absolutely on the line in this country. You know, I myself um, am LGBT. And so, the, the you know, the rights of people to live their lives, to love who they want to love and have the same rights are really being used by the Republican Party as a as a wedge issue. Um, and it's, you know, it's important to me as somebody who's been married to a woman for the last 20 years that I have the same rights as anybody else. When I came to the Netherlands, I actually didn't, I didn't have the right to bring my wife to the United States. Uh, we, you know, our relationship was not covered in any kind of U.S. law um, back in 2000. And we lobbied and worked for 12 years to change the immigration law in the United States to make sure that we were treated equally as a family. Um, and that's a really precious right to me and we've only had that right for 10 years. We really wanna be sure that everybody is treated the same and has the same access to the same freedoms. Certainly, uh, there's also a, uh, I, wonder, I was a little bit concerned about maybe uh, the effect from November in 22, that was such a big uh, yeah. I guess, wedge issue uh, and it was under the impression that it would become another one for in, in 2024, but it, sometimes it's hard to keep the pressure and remind people that that, that was actually uh, you know, a midterm election. This perhaps is even more important at a general. Uh, I don't yeah. know if you can talk about the effects of you know women's right to choose and, uh, and all these matters that you were just talking about. Um, if there's something that we can be doing to keep the uh, eligible voters focused on these things and to remind them that it's really important that just because you voted two years ago doesn't mean you shouldn't vote or didn't get yeah. registered to vote for, yeah. uh, for this coming year. Yeah, well, you know, it's on the ballot again this year in Ohio. Um, 
the right to choose. It's really, it, and it's on the ballot in the local elections, um, you know, this November in Virginia. If the Re Republicans win, they have vowed um, to take down the right to abortion in Virginia. So it's certainly still on the ballot. You know, what we saw in 2022 was an enormous turnout of young people. That is so encouraging. And, you know, those are people that are really impacted. I mean, they're at the beginning of their lives, you know, the beginning of thoughts of starting a family and having, you know, careers and everything that they want to have. And so it was really important and really wonderful to see that the, that, that re issue resonated so much with young people. The the, the idea that the government would take away long established rights and rights that are that are supported by a majority of the population, of course, is is outrageous. And it was really great to see so many people stepping up. And I hope not just young people, but I hope everybody steps up to vote this year, um, even those of us who are um, who are a little bit older. But I think it's going to be really important to to uh, to engage exactly around those issues that, that were so important in 2022 because they're not going away. Um, but the, you know, the right to choose is a really important one. And I hope that it, that as well as the climate, the climate is such an important issue right now. And it's such, so important to young people. Again, they have such a future ahead of them and it should be important to all of us. I hope those, those are issues that are really um, front and center. And Joe Biden has certainly made the climate one of his core issues and, and things that he has passed in important legislation like the Inflation Reduction Act. Um, so we have to bring those successes um, out to people so that they know how much has been accomplished um, and then keep those those issues front and center. Absolutely. And yeah, the infrastructure bill, if you want to get away from some of the more, I guess, heated topics, is something that is tremendously important to many states and as well as jobs. And all these different presidents for many years always talking about it and never got it done. And Joe Biden with such a slim margin of victory with uh, Nancy Pelosi's help, very shrewd ways of getting passing bills, uh, as well as um, bringing the country together. I think Joe Biden has done a fantastic job with uh, the huge challenges ahead of him. And I think we just need to continue doing the same and uh, allowing the, uh, the American people to continue working. And inclusively, what I would like to do is to figure out a way to, to increase uh, young voters to participate with Democrats abroad because they have such strong passions on, on the climate as well as, uh, you know, I guess, LGBTQ rights, and of course, a woman's right to choose. And if uh, they're going to be the ones who have to live with the consequences of the laws that have been passed now, I hope that they definitely show up to choose and make a difference and have their voice heard. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, I really appreciate you coming. Also, you're going to be here next week. And I want to remind people that if they would like a chance to meet with you, as well as get to know the Democrats abroad in Barcelona and Spain, we're going to be at the Icon uh, BCN Hotel. Um, it is in the center of the city. Uh, I uh, hope to see you there. Um, anything you want to share about that? Oh, I'm so looking forward to coming to uh, to Barcelona and meeting other Democrats abroad. Um, I, I love Barcelona. I've been coming there for decades. I have a very good friend there. I'm really looking forward to it. Excellent. Well, if there's anything that I can do, don't hesitate to, uh, to ask. Uh, I'm the new chair of the Democrats Abroad Barcelona, and I would love to meet you and other people and, and you know help us because uh, I think we're, we're standing on the shoulders of giants who really made a tremendous effort here in Barcelona, and, but there's still much work to be done. So we want to thank you for coming and remind people if they'd like a chance to meet with you personally, come out and join us. All you got to do is be an American citizen as well as join Democrats Abroad. Um, I guess I'll talk to you soon. Unless there's anything else you'd like to share, that's all I have for you uh, today. Thanks so much. Well, I just want to remind everybody that democracy is not a spectator sport. Um, it's something that requires all of our participation. And thanks so much for having me. Okay. Thank you so much, Martha. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>